So if you've ever done any resin 3D printing, you're more than likely familiar with Lychee Slicer, which allows you to work with a wide variety of resin 3D printers and all of their different file formatting needs that they have. And most recently, I just did a video showcasing Lychee Slicer's latest update that includes things like the planar cut tool and the ability to do inline supports. Well, today we're not here to talk about resin 3D printing and Lychee Slicer. We're gonna be checking out how Lychee Slicer can now support your favorite FDM 3D printers as well. That's right, Lychee Slicer now supports all of your favorite FDM 3D printers like the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro. Well, technically that's not true just yet and we'll talk about that here in just a few minutes. But you are able to actually get in there with a free version of this slicer and create 3D printable files that you can run off and print for yourself. Now there is a pro subscription option as well that's gonna have some additional features just like they have on the resin side of things. But it's not a requirement that you have to go off and buy the pro version. However, again, there are gonna be some additional functionality that's tied to that pro subscription. Well, you might be thinking, Jesse, I can do all of this currently for free with Cura. And yes, you're absolutely correct. However, I am not a big fan of Cura. It's just so, clunky and does not run well for me, especially on the Mac side of things. Uh, I still, to this day, am using Simplify 3D, which is a piece of software that I purchased, I don't know, five years ago now at this point and really hasn't been updated in the past four years maybe. And I highly don't recommend running off and buying that right now unless they decide to come out with a newer version. However, that slicer works so incredibly well for me. It's quick to use and most importantly, why I still use it all over instead of things like Cura or Prusa Slicer even, is the supports. The supports and the ability to precisely place the supports where I want them and see them without having to actually slice the file is so important to me. That's exactly what I wanna be able to do with any slicer. And for the most part, there's not a lot that allow you to do that. And thankfully, the latest update with Lychee allows you to precisely set exactly where your supports are gonna be placed. All right, so over on our computer, if we get Lychee Slicer loaded up, if you've already used this and working with it on the resin side and have the latest version, then you already have access to the filament version here that you can work with. All you need to do is click on the 3D printer in the top corner here and then click on add and you now have a new option to choose between resin printers and filament based 3D printers. If you click on filament based printers, you'll see a huge list of supported brands and their 3D printers that you can work with this particular update for this slicer. I'm gonna be working with a bunch of the different Elegoo 3D printers. So I'm gonna come under Elegoo and I can see that they have support for the Neptune 2, 2D, 2S, 3 and the Neptune X. However, I'm gonna be working with the Neptune 3 Pro which isn't listed here. And that's one issue that I currently have with the slicer is that there's no way to add my own custom printer profiles just yet. I provided that feedback and I know a bunch of others have as well. So hopefully we'll see that here with one of the future updates. And just like with your resin 3D printers, you have the ability to create your own custom filament based profiles. And I'm assuming that you'll be able to share those with the community, just like you can with the resin profiles based on the printer and the filament brand that you're working with. So here, if I come under edit, we'll see a bunch of the standard settings that you'd see in most slicers. So what layer height, what print speed, the infill, what infill type, how many top layers, bottom layers, walls, etc. retraction settings, you're all gonna be able to find directly in here. One thing that is missing currently from this ability is to be able to define what is the nozzle size that you're gonna be working with. Now, I'm not sure if this is gonna be, how quickly this will be updated, but at the moment it appears to be locked in at 0.4 millimeter layer height. So that's one thing that I'm hoping that will be adjusted because I have a whole bunch of 0.6 millimeter nozzle machines up and running here. So here I brought in a crown that we're gonna be 3D printing and we can see that there's an issue with it and it needs to be repaired. It's great to see that the repair tool that we've seen on the resin side of things has made its way over into the filament side of things. You can also use all the same basic tools on the left hand side to orient and place your print however you need to on the build volume of your 3D printer. Now, when we move over into the prepare tab, this is where you can get some basic controls over things like the layer height, infill, uh, the infill option that you're gonna be working with. So is it grid, hexagon? Are you gonna be printing in vase mode, et cetera? Uh, what print speed, again, top, bottom, wall settings, et cetera, you can have quick access to playing around with changing those here before running off and printing anything. Now. What gets me really excited about this slicer isn't necessarily the setting and controls. Those are the same sort of standard things that you see on all the different slicers that are out there. It's what comes down to how I place my supports. So here I can either do manual or auto. So here I'll quickly generate some auto supports for this particular print. 
It's extremely fast with generating there. And what I love about the auto generation is just like on the resin side of things, I can come in here and I can manually delete supports as I need to, or if I needed to manually place some additional supports, I can quickly come in there and manually place some additional supports. And I'm instantly seeing those. It's not like I'm painting it on and then have to go slice and wait for it to render before I can actually see those supports. Now, one really cool setting that's in here for manually placing supports is if I come in here, they have a mirror support option. So I'm gonna say mirror along the X because I wanna start manually placing supports on one side of this crown and it's gonna automatically start placing it on the other side. This is wildly amazing for me when it comes to actually putting supports manually on all the different cosplay prints that I typically work with where they're very symmetrical and I don't have to worry about placing them on both sides manually. I can come in here and just do one side and it's gonna automatically place the supports on the other. You can also see here as another representation, if I come into other areas of the crown and place some manual supports in these areas, that it's gonna automatically place those on the other side as well. You also have basic controls for things, how you can adjust the supports, the width of those. On the free version versus the pro version, the pro is gonna allow you to have a lot more flexibility to make thinner and wider supports. On the free version, it's just a basic cube that you can adjust the, the size of. Now, one other additional thing that's available here on the pro version of this app that's not available in the free version is support painting. So here I can actually come in here and it's broken with the mirror functionality, unfortunately at the moment, but hopefully that'll be fixed soon, is I can come in here and if I just click and hold, it's gonna automatically paint these supports for me all along the perimeter of this crown. I am loving this. It's gonna be amazing for trying to support things like helmets where I only want them around the perimeter and not on the inside dome. So before I run off and slice this file, I actually need to scale it up to 112% size to fit my head, but it's not gonna fit the build volume of the Neptune 3 Pro. So I'm gonna come on here under the 3D printer settings and I've actually made a custom printer profile by copying another printer that has a similar build volume of the brand new Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus. 3D printer, which is a much larger version of the Neptune 3 Pro that I'm very excited to be printing with. So I'm gonna get this supported and we're gonna get it sliced. So if we move over into the prepare tab, this is where you can actually generate the G code where it's gonna slice the file, give you your print times, and you can get a print preview of this before exporting out the actual G code file. Now, the slicing isn't as fast as what I see over on Simplify 3D. However, it seems to be a good bit faster than the slicing experience that I have with Cura, which is always a positive. And here you'll see a preview of your sliced file before you export out the G code file. And on the bottom left hand corner, you'll see some of the estimated print times, etc. I'm honestly not loving the color of how this looks. I think this is visually not a great representation of the file here. It's in color mode, which is gonna show you how it's like the print speed that it's printing with. I can change this to the line type, which again is still, uh, for me, at least on my screen, very hard to see the details of this unless I start zooming in, then I can see it a little bit better, but even then it's still hard to see the visual of this. So hopefully they change how this is visually represented here before you export it out. But here we can actually click on the export G code file. And this is where if you have the free version of the software, you'll have to sit through like a 15 to 30 second ad. But with the pro version, you obviously can just export it out with no ads. So let's actually take a look at some of the files that I've run off and printed. First off, we had to start with the Benchy. Come on now, that's the go-to for everybody. The Lychee sliced file looks pretty good. This was printed on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro and it was printed in one hour and 18 minutes. I then went off and reprinted the same file in Simplify 3D trying to mimic some of the exact same settings like speed, infill, uh, layer height settings, etc. And this took almost one hour and 30 minutes to print. So the lychee print actually printed a little bit faster there. Again, I'm sure there were slight differences in the profile settings that I was using between each of those, but the results are looking fairly good. There's a little bit of uh, gaps in the prints or the, the areas where the actual retraction was occurring could probably be a little bit cleaner. Again, that might just come down to me refining my settings a little bit further in lychee. Then I went off and printed some of these Magai Beer Calibration Dragons or the Cali Dragons here. The files were scaled up by 150% of the original scale and the Lychee file took one hour and I think 35 minutes to print. And the Chitu, sorry, I keep wanting to say Chitu box because I'm so used to doing Lychee 
and uh, Cheetu box comparisons on the resin side, but this is Simplify 3D file, print file. This took one hour and 50 minutes to print. We then have these low poly Snorlax print files that were created by Augustine Floistic that you can find over on printables. These are a really fun and easy thing to run off and print. And in fact, I printed these completely hollow to try and help speed up the print process. And oddly enough, the lychee sliced file took two hours and 30 minutes to print, whereas the Simplify 3D file took only two hours to print. Now here's a really fun print that I saw that someone printed and was showing off over on one of the Facebook groups. So I went and found the file over on Colts 3D, downloaded it and got it sliced over in Lychee Slicer and printed here. And the results look okay, but Honestly, I think it has to do more with the actual file itself. The file is not solid and has a lot of different issues. Lychee did try to repair the file and even though it was repaired and sliced, it still had issues with the print. So I went off and used the exact same file and again, went off and tried to print this in Simplify 3D. One feature that Simplify 3D has, and I think some of the other slicers have it as well, is it has a combine objects function where if it sees that there are multiple objects like this in a file, it will try to make it solid for you so that when it goes to actually slice it, it is more of a clean print. And this print certainly looks a lot cleaner than the original one that I sliced with Lychee Slicer. And I brought this up to the team there and they said that they are aware of this. And I believe they said it's a setting that they don't have actually visible in the app just yet as it's still being tested, but it sounds like it's definitely something that's coming. And I printed this on the Neptune X. And one thing that I am noticing is that I'm seeing some ringing on this, which means I more than likely need to tighten up some of my belts. This also has a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. So it printed like way faster than when I was able to with this original file that I sliced in Lychee. I would again, love the ability to swap the nozzle sizes in the slicer so that I could do some more prints like this with the machines that I had 0.6 millimeter nozzles up and running on. And speaking of different machines, I have a lot of different Elegoo Neptune 2S 3D printers. So I went off and printed this low poly dice tower. And for the most part, it printed so well. This was printed at 0.28 millimeter layer height. There were no supports needed, but unfortunately it just kind of broke free in this one part here. And again, I think it might have to do with the actual file itself, not so much the slicer, or maybe it is a combination of the two, because I believe maybe if that one setting that we were just previously talking about was available here, it might've prevented this because the actual top portion printed completely solid, like it was a, individual piece itself versus something that was completely combined together. I'm not entirely sure. It should be repairable, I think, but I'm just loving how the print turned out in this rainbow filament here. Now, I also wanted to run off and print something just kind of fun and silly, which is something again that I saw over, I think it was either on Reddit or Facebook that someone designed a I love 3D printing cup that is purposely designed to fail. It's supposed to look like it's a failed 3D print and I love the concept of that. It's just a really fun and unique idea to run off and try and print. So this printed here at I think 0.2 millimeter layer height here in maybe about six hours or so on the Neptune 3 Pro. So again, this also had supports that were on the handle that I used and the supports really cleanly and easily broke away. And speaking of supports, what about that House of the Dragon crown that was printed on the Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus? Well, here it is, this printed and it took 15 hours to print at 0.2 millimeter layer heights here. I have a little bit of stringing that needs to be cleaned up. And actually, yeah, these uh, the supports are here on the bottom are popping off pretty easily here. Even by hand, I can just pop these off. So bravo on those support settings. The default settings there work pretty well. So I've got the supports and the stringing relatively cleaned up here on this crown. Let's see if it actually fits if my scaling was right. And I think it was just about perfect. This actually worked pretty well. Now I just need a strap for the actual face mask part and I should be all set. Well then other than weathering and fully painting all of this. I want to take a minute to say thank you to today's video sponsor, which is Elegoo, the makers of the Elegoo Neptune 3 the Elegoo Neptune 3 Pro, the Neptune 2S, and the Neptune X that I was showing in today's video, along 
with the soon to be released Elegoo Neptune 3 Plus, which I'll be showing in more detail in a full video later next week. So excited about this machine. And by the way, Elegoo has a sale going on right now that should still hopefully be available on their Elegoo Jupiter or their other resin and FDM3 printers directly over on their website where you can find links to down below. So if you're interested in picking up one of those, make sure to grab them now while they're on sale. Now, is the slicer perfect? No, and far from it, but I'm really happy to see that Lychee's taking the steps of creating a version of their resin 3D printer slicer that lots of people enjoy using and making a variation of that for FDM 3D printers. And I know it's only gonna get better from here, but is it worth you paying the extra money for the pro version? For me, yeah, and it's on sale right now for I think I paid $30 extra for the year for this version, and I know there's gonna be additional features that are gonna to come to it, but you could always wait and see. They have the free version of the resin slicer that a ton of people use, and they have the free filament version as well that you can bring in files, get them supported, and get them sliced and ready for printing. Well, aside from waiting for those few ads that you're gonna to have to sit through just like on the free version of the resin slicer. I also wanted to mention a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support. I'm gonna be working on creating some new filament setting profiles for some of my 3D printers. And the great thing about Lychee is that once you have one of these filament profiles, you can actually use them across different 3D printers. So hopefully that will help some of you out there that are part of my Patreon or looking for better FDM 3D printer setting options. But let me know what your thoughts are down below on Lychee creating this new filament-based 3D printing slicer option that's gonna be available for a huge number of 3D printers. Again, this is just the initial version, so I'm sure there's gonna be lots of kinks for them to work through. Also, you can check out their Discord, which there is lots and lots of people testing out this and providing a ton of feedback. They're gonna have their hands full for like the next, I don't know, three to six months just providing updates for feedback on the filament side of things here. But hey, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye now. I am so crazy excited about this Neptune 3 Plus 3D printer. Oh, this thing is so amazing. So excited about it.